know, when you learn about conservation, you're really thinking about pristine communities and ecosystems and protected areas. But what really surprised me the most about working on the ranch is that private ranches are so important to conservation and biodiversity in Florida. It'll be a sad day to see to come to Florida and, and not be able to see open space. I'm not saying you won't see it because yeah, we have a lot of conserved land, uh, but to come down and see, to see a cowboy out across the pasture and gathering a set of cows or, or just being out there riding, you know, it'll be a great loss to Florida because we have such a long history. In uh, 2021, we'll celebrate uh, 500 years of ranching. When I first came here, I always said, I met a local man, and he said, so you're the man that's going to destroy the cattle industry in the state of Florida. And I said, well, why do you say that? He said, oh, you're going to be doing all this science stuff and all this research. And I sat there and told him real fast, I said, well, sir, if we don't get these numbers and find the truth behind some of the questions that are being asked, you're dead and you don't even know it. Back in 1988, the MacArthur Foundation leased Buck Island Ranch to Archbold Biological Station, a world-renowned field research center just 15 miles west. Archbold had a vision to understand the value of private ranches for conservation and to use science to inform ranch management. For my first visit to the ranch back in 2002, I remember driving down the winding ranch road and looking out at the wide open vistas of pasture and seeing cows grazing under palm trees. Today, much of our research focuses on understanding wetlands and water management within the headwaters of the Everglades. During the summer, our wetlands, canals, and ditches fill up with water. And when this water level exceeds our current holding capacity, the water gets released really quickly into canals, which ultimately flow into Lake Okeechobee. This quick release can create problems for downstream ecosystems. So one of the things that we do here is try to slow down the flow of water. This is one of the projects where we are growing a special kind of grass called Hamathria, uh, with the intention of manipulating the water to allow the flow to become slower, sediments to settle, and nutrients to be pulled in to the biomass that we see around us. Our research found getting rid of cows was not the answer to Florida's water quality problem. We discovered a tremendous legacy of phosphorus in ranch soils from past fertilizer use. So we devised a simple water control structure for all the canals that crisscross the ranch lands. And so we worked with our partners to implement an incentive program to install these really cost-effective water control structures. We are actually reducing the nutrient load and improving the water quality for the local environment as well as downstream heading into the Everglades. The ranchers and scientists burn together to better understand how fire and cattle grazing affect the ranch ecosystem. Fire is a very vital portion to ranch management. Fire helps keep the woody species down as well. So I think between the combination of fire and water, it kept a lot of this country open. Over the last 30 years, students and scientists from around the globe have come to study the ecology of Buck Island Ranch. Everything we do here strives to balance sustainability with a productive cattle operation. 30.5. We're sampling forage quality and quantity and, and trying to figure out how much the cattle ate. So they didn't graze in this particular area where we're clipping, but they did graze over here in this plot. A network of game cameras set up by University of Florida researchers studying feral hogs captured lots of wildlife, including several black bears, Florida panther, 
otters, bobcats, and lots of wading birds. We never really wanted to develop the whole land because we wanted the cows to have the opportunity to go out to the wild, the wilder side or the semi-native type pastures where they'd kind of change their diet up for the winter time. Then they could calve and then have some cover, some trees and things. That's an eastern meadow lark calling. Those are declining elsewhere in the U.S., but they're really abundant on the ranch. In the early years, bird researchers revealed that semi-native prairie and improved pasture are critical for grassland birds. This is especially true for the crested caracara, a once common prairie bird, now a threatened species. Here we are at one of our flux towers where we are studying the invisible, that is gases, and how gases like carbon dioxide and methane get exchanged between the air, the atmosphere, and the land surface, between the vegetation, the soils, the cows. Plants, when they grow, they photosynthesize and they take up carbon dioxide from the air and lock that up in their tissue, plant tissue and root tissues. And when these plants decompose, the bacteria release the carbon in the form of carbon dioxide back into the air. Flooded soils and wetlands release methane into the air. Cows are also known to release methane. Our research so far has found that low levels of grazing, as well as periodic fire, actually spurs grass growth and the vegetation growth, which in turn leads to you know, higher levels of carbon dioxide uptake. And in the end, the ranch takes up more carbon dioxide and blocks it in vegetation and soil as compared to the amount of carbon dioxide given out through respiration. So here we have one of our 600 seasonal wetland on the ranch. What we're trying to do is to really keep water as much as we can on these wetlands. Our studies found that wetlands in semi-native pasture harbor incredible biodiversity. Plants, frogs, fish, turtles, snakes, you name it. So what we did to bring back the hydrology was to plug the many ditches that we have on the ranch. By improving hydrology, we were bringing back wetland species. And we also observed that maintaining cattle grazing didn't affect the success of the restoration. I think it's a great pleasure and also it's an honor to work with cattlemen and to learn from them because they know the land the best. I mean, they've been working on, on these lands for generations. At Buck Island Ranch, scientists and cowboys have a lot of things in common. And the number one thing is that we have a mutual respect and love for this land. <laughs>